All right, guys, cleanup crew sent me in here to mop up the Game of Thrones mess. Where's it? Oh my God! Jesus! Oh my God! What happened? Is Stranger Things okay? Oh, thank God. All right, well, let's get started. <laughs> Stranger Things vs. Game of Thrones, is it fair to compare the two? Well, one is backed by one of the most accomplished writers of our time, and the other is backed by the Duffer Brothers. So is it fair? No, not really, but I don't think that'll matter. Some of you are probably thinking, well, you can't compare a finished show to an unfinished show. Well, if you want, you can wait eight years when both shows are concluded to watch this video essay. I promise not much will change and you might be dead. The newest season of Game of Thrones was one of the most highly anticipated seasons of all time, and with Stranger Things Season 2 being a little less than satisfactory, I think it's safe to say the hype was more real for Game of Thrones. But which series came out on top in 2019? Let's jump into Stranger Things vs Game of Thrones. Characters with superpowers. Both shows have characters with supernatural abilities, but which one handled them better? Let's look at Bran. He defied all odds and went north of the wall as a cripple. He was the first person to square off against the Night King. His story gained so much momentum that people were speculating the finale would be mostly about him. He gained powers to travel through time and space and possibly even have an effect on it. He had the ability to warg into animals and people and potentially even dragons. But you will fly. So that was a fucking lie. He became all-knowing and all-seeing. His character was so overpowered he couldn't even interact with normal people anymore. Brian! I'm not really. You're a man. Almost. I'm something else now. I'm going to go now. Go where? What did he do with those powers? He told Sam to tell John about his mom. It's time to tell John the truth. You're his brother. Shouldn't you tell him? Eleven. In season two, she went Super Saiyan and used her powers to literally close a portal to another dimension. In season three, she uses her powers to throw a car across a mall, saving the lives of half the cast. Then she loses her powers and still sticks around for the grand finale, playing a crucial role in destroying the Mind Flayer. Even without her powers, she had more of an effect on the story. Point, Stranger Things. Character development. I don't know if I can even do this one, guys. It brings me great pain to talk about character development in Game of Thrones. You don't need my channel to tell you that there is none. I'm not going to go deep into it all. I'm just going to talk about one guy, Tyrion. Tyrion was my favorite character, and a huge majority of the fans as well. He's not a fighter, he's a thinker. And he has the most popular line in the show. How do you know this? That's what I do. I drink, and I know things. So much of the show revolved around Tyrion's genius plans and his execution of said plans. Until we get towards the end of the series. And now all the characters do is just talk about how smart Tyrion is. You can't fight as well as they can, but you can think better than any of them. You're here because of your mind. If we survive, I'll need it. Name one instance where Tyrion actually did something smart in the last season. Everything he does leaves the viewer screaming at the TV. No, wait, why is he betraying his best friend? Wait, what the fuck? He's freeing his brother personally? Shouldn't have he, like, hired someone to do that so he was less suspicious? Wow, he's gonna disrespect the queen during a war speech. That'll really show her. He signed his death wish and his backup plan is Jon Snow? Alright, since we only talked about one character from Game of Thrones, let's focus on one from Stranger Things. Steve Harrington. When I first met this guy, I thought he was a total jerkbag. And he was. He does some shitty things and is obviously one of the antagonists for the show. But by the end of season one, you have this feeling in your gut that makes you question your own judgment. Maybe he wasn't a bad guy, he just got caught up in the moment. And then by season two, he's literally a main protagonist. He even gave up his girlfriend to advance the plot of the show. They slowly progress his story until he becomes one of the good guys. Point Stranger Things. Redemption Arc. I cannot be the only one that thought Jamie was still alive for the finale. They killed my man with some falling boulders after he had a one night stand with Brianna Tarth and I thought, no fucking way. They are subverting my expectations here. They want me to think that he's dead so that when he comes back for the finale and does some amazing badass stuff to conclude his arc, I'm totally shocked. Well, this is his scene I was highly anticipating. Of course, everyone also thought that Jamie might do some badass stuff in the Battle of Winterfell, right? I mean, he rode all the way across Westeros. That can't be it, right? He's gonna sacrifice himself to save Sansa or something. But nope, he just wrestles some zombies and then leaves. 
Even when Brianna Tarth is writing his story to fill out his pages, she forgets to mention he saved the population of King's fucking landing. And stand by while thousands of men, women, and children burn to life. Would you have done it? Would you have kept your oath then? They forgot to include his most important character arc in a book devoted to explaining his character arc in a show that promised us a great character arc. So you just gonna forget about my character arc and a book about character arcs during my character arc? Do you like your character arc? <laughs> Bitch. I know everyone hated Billy in season two, but when I saw him smoking a cig while pumping iron, I knew what was happening. I knew there was no way they could put this beautiful bicep mullet man on my TV without making everyone love him at some point. There's a bunch of people saying, oh, well, he's a racist. You can't forgive his character for that. And something you learn is that there are certain type of people in this world that you stay away from. And that kid, Max, that kid, is one of them. I'm just saying his character was written with depth. His portrayal was a highlight of the season, and if you hated him, it's because the writers wanted you to. But they knew there would also be people willing to forgive him. It's called good writing. This is the opposite of good writing. My queen. Daenerys is our queen. You are my queen. And you will always be my queen. You are my queen. But let's get back on track. This piece of shit racist abusive stepbrother defied the Mind Flayer. And I don't mean he ran at the Mind Flayer and uselessly died. I mean he full on milked every second he could to save this little girl's life that he barely even knew. And in his final moments we finally get to hear how Billy really felt. He loved his sister. He didn't want to be a dirtbag. It was the environment he was raised in. And when the chips were down, he stepped up and fought an undead monster to prevent the apocalypse. And I think that's pretty cool. Point Stranger Things. But there's one more character redemption arc I'm forgetting. Theon's. Theon was one of the most annoying characters from early Game of Thrones. No one liked him. There was nothing special about him. And then he started being a real asshole and everyone really hated him. But at some point, we found ourselves in a dungeon with Theon getting mercilessly tortured for a whole season and we thought, yeah, maybe this guy doesn't deserve all that. And from that point on, I think we were all team Theon. He helps Sansa escape. He comes to his sister's aid in a time of need. And of course, this heartbreaking moment. I want to fight for Winterfell, Lady Sansa. If you'll have me. And his story comes to a close when a last ditch effort to save Bran by running at this guy gets him killed. Running wasn't a good idea, Theon, but honestly, we forgive you for it. We're giving out two points this round. Game of Thrones is on the board. Death scenes. All right, guys, here it is. Here's the finale moment, the moment the entire show has been building to. Decades of books, nine years of production, story development, plot and character arcs have all come to this one moment and it's over. Wait, how did this happen? She didn't see that coming? How could something eight seasons in the making feel not fleshed out? All right, let's stop by Stranger Things where they're killing off a guy that's only been in three episodes. No, <laughs> Lexi, you were the best of them. Your childlike wonder from winning the America game struck a chord deep in my heart. Point Stranger Things. Do things mentioned earlier come back in a significant way or is it just fucked? All right, does anyone else remember this lady? Seriously, who the fuck was this? Will you betray her again? I was waiting for an answer forever, and it wasn't until the last few episodes where I realized how dumb I was for giving them credit to actually pay this off. And that's just one scene. They didn't even pay off any of the big things. Think of all the buildup of Bran. He can literally travel through space and time, and what does he do with it? He wargs into some crows. All his powers, his green scene abilities, they never had any actual impact on the story. And what about Arya? Jacka Dagar spent all that time training her just so she could murder some weird old men. Alright, I'm not going to say that this had any real impact on the story, but you could have never have imagined that this throwaway side story in the first episode would end up being this. <laughs> The fact that Dustin having a girlfriend actually made a difference in the story, but Bran could travel through time and it didn't impact the story at all, basically sums up the whole point of this video. Point Stranger Things Female Leads 
Daenerys becomes a murderous tyrant in one day, dividing the fan base in half, and then she herself is murdered because of her lack of foresight against obvious threats. Sansa, I don't know. She was happy about being sexually assaulted? Without Littlefinger and Ramsay and the rest, I would have stayed a little bird all my life. Arya, she runs around and is super smart. I'm going to kill her when I see one. And then bails. Brianna Tarth. She's a crime one night stand now. All right, let's drop by Stranger Things. Please, baby. I need to find you. Tell me what to do. I'm proud of you. Proud of me for getting fired. That you stood up for yourself. That you stood up to those shitheads. Mom. Yes, those shitheads. <sighs> and if you believe in this story, look at me, Nancy. Finish it. Point, Stranger Things. In conclusion, honestly, this horse has been beaten to death. I'm not even going to announce a winner. Leave your complaints in the comments about how I nitpicked certain things to support my argument. And tell me how much I suck or how much you love my dog. See you next time, guys.